This week on Common Grounds TV. We start a 15,000 kilometer quest for coffee from Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia. We don't get mugged in Halifax. And we go underground to find a cafe known as Uncommon Grounds. Welcome to Common Grounds TV. This is where it all begins. We are as far east as we can go at Peggy's Cove in Halifax. We just came from the uh, actual shore, the rocks, right next to the pounding Atlantic, and uh, damn near got swept out to sea. So we thought we'd come back a bit, uh, take a few steps away from the ocean towards safety, away from certain death, and uh, try it again. If we seem a bit haggard, it's because we are. We are camping, hosteling, hoteling, sleeping in the car, sleeping at the side of the road, you name it. But we're doing all that to find you the best coffee in Canada. So here we are, introducing the show. Enjoy. <laughs> we're using two vehicles, the first of which is the Audi A4 you see behind me. We'll be sort of adapting a coffee delivery system to help us with the middle parts of the country that really don't offer that much in the way of coffee. The second vehicle, Something a little bit more suited to the landscape of the Pacific Northwest. Something that will tackle mountains, streams, rivers with uh, the same kind of poise and uh, facility that the Audi tackles over the road. To prepare for our journey, we asked the folks at Canarap to make the Audi stand out. And within minutes, they had emblazoned our cross-country vehicle with 3M decals from the sponsors who made the series possible. The Audi was an easy choice due to the car's combination of mileage, storage, and comfort. Halifax is steeped in history, some of which is rather grim. In 1917, a Belgian relief ship collided with a French munition ship, sparking the largest man-made explosion prior to the first atomic bomb test. The blast devastated the city's north end, killing 2,000 people and injuring another 9,000. To look at Halifax today, one would scarcely believe the city had endured such a disaster. Downtown is a bustling and friendly metropolitan center, and it boasts the highest number of bars and pubs per capita this side of Ireland. England's influence as a colonial power is still present today, and visible in the forms of the city's architecture, namely the Citadel. These elements make Halifax a year-round tourist destination. Come sundown, Halifax's edgier port city routes become obvious as the night spots fire up and street performers provide entertainment. Yes. Oh no! No! He's a little warmer for the audience here. One of the best cafe spaces in Halifax is certainly that of Uncommon Grounds with their subterranean New York style cafe. So Gordon, one of the things that we've found throughout our travels and interviews is that very few of the cafe owners have actually started out in the restaurant industry or in the cafe industry. What, what's your story? Uh, well, I was a big coffee drinker and uh, hung out in a lot of cafes, but I started out in life as a, a chartered account and an investment analyst. And, uh, Eventually got tired of doing that whole thing and, and decided that I had more passion for coffee and, and I thought it was more interesting. And so I, uh, I quit my job and started a cafe. 
Halifax has always had a lot of cafes, but they've always been focused on the main shopping streets. Um, but the reality is, there's so many great neighborhoods in the city that you know people would leave their house and you know get in a car, get in a, get on a bus to go to a cafe. It just didn't make any sense. Um, you know, great universities. You know, there's thousands of apartments within you know a couple blocks of us here. So we uh, we took a flyer on this location. It was. Uh, you know, everybody pretty much said that's crazy. I'll never work there, um, and we've been busy since the day we opened. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you've noticed a lot of the, the old town, the old city, Halifax. It's very, uh, very retro. It's very yeah. traditional. Yeah, you've kind of taken a different approach here. Yeah, no. Again, I think a lot of people are trying to play it safe, and they saw something in the city and wanted to copy that. Whereas, you know, we had traveled a lot. We know a lot of different cafes and wanted something that was really going to stand out. Because again, if we were going to be off that main street, we wanted to make something you know very unique. It sounds like you've got a pretty, uh, pretty deep history in coffee. Yeah, I mean, you know, shortly after graduating from university, uh, my wife and I decided to go on this tour of North America um, to look at different cafes. We had no intention of actually doing one at that point. It was, you know, we were 21 years old and needed to get a real job. Um, but we drove 25,000 kilometers in seven weeks. Uh, I think we hit 35 states and all, or nine of the provinces. We didn't make it over to Newfoundland. Um, but some days we'd hit 10, 12 different cafes. We went to the you know, southernmost coffee roasters on Duval Street, Key West, uh, all the way over to LA, up to BC, you know, through all the old school, uh, you know, Seattle, Starbucks, number one, store, Pikes Place Market, San Francisco. I mean, we got a book in San Francisco when we got there. It was about 300 pages of the cafes of San Francisco. And then took, you know, the next two days on this super caffeinated journey through the streets of, of San Francisco. Um, and so, you know, after that, we just parked all that information, all that experience for 10 or 12 years. You know, had a, had a career, had a kid, and decided to do this. Wow. Here we are. That's amazing. And frankly, we're a little bit angry and jealous that your coffee drive is bigger than ours. Uh, you know, there's always next year. <laughs> Maybe we just won't go home, we'll just keep driving. Yeah, yeah. He did 32 states. Right? Well, Some, added, somebody so. send you your passports and you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, we wanted to you know, bring that little piece of New York or that little piece of a big city into into the you know, the, the neighborhoods of Halifax. And, and so we took a very, very different approach. You know, this space was subterranean, no natural light really. Uh, we cut a big hole in the side of the concrete, threw some steps down, and and it opened up into this really unique space. Um, so you sort of walk in and, and you're on top of it all and you get to sort of scan the crowd and see your friends and neighbors. And, Survey from above. And uh, you know, it's kind of like that cheers moment, you know, when they're coming down the stairs and everyone yells, I know them. Well, you, you, have say, you, you, have that same, you have that same ability here because you come in above everybody. Right. Uh, so people kind of see you coming in. Cool. And what was the space prior to you occupying it? Uh, it had been a number of things, but most notably it was the pool uh, for the building and the uh, gym uh, in the 70s and early 80s. Cool. Any remaining traces of that? Oh yeah, yeah. my office is on top of the pool right now, so it's uh, just built up the floor and, and there it is. There are washrooms there, what used to be the, uh, the uh, change rooms. So this is it. This is what people come fire and wide for. Can you tell me again what those entities? Uh, Guatemala and Kenya Rica. Uh, Kenya and Costa Rica. Kenya Rica. Yeah, Kenya Rica. Very it's a, it's a new country. We're going to merge the two of them later on. Uh, uh, coffee growing economic giant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is, uh, that's Fogburner. Great name. Designed to burn off your morning fog. Next week on Common Grounds TV. The George Costanza of Coffee sits down with us. And we go to the home of the Trailer Park Boys to meet one of the most popular baristas in Canada.